Well, thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. Um, uh, I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guests are the writer-directors of the now horror classic Goodnight Mommy, Veronica Friends, and Severin Fiala, who are here with stars Jaden Martell and Liam McHugh for their new film, The Lodge, which proves to be just as scary, if not more disturbing, uh, than Mommy was. Please welcome, put your hands together for Veronica Franz, Severin Fiala, Jaden Martell, and Liam McHugh. Hey. Morning. Right. Um, I don't want to compare uh, this too much to what I said, your now classic film, Good Night, Mommy, uh, which I truly believe it is. It was, uh, I remember when it came out, it just, everybody was talking about it, and it was a foreign film, which in America, you have made a classic movie if, pe if everybody's talking about a foreign film. Um, but this, in some ways, does feel like a bit of a companion piece, where it's, it's two children, they are dealing with grief, tragic, violent grief, and uh, there is a malevolent presence, possibly a spirit, possibly an actual person and what they're going through. Did you see it as that as well? Was this born out of some of the ideas that maybe were, didn't fit into Mommy or were just sort of in your head around the time that you were creating that movie? Yeah, actually, I think we only realized like later on that <laughs> I think directors keep realizing like, oh, I did the same movie again and again and again and again. Yeah. Not because I think like uh, it's so much of a conscious decision, but some of the themes and topics of Goodnight Mommy are still working in us and are still things that are interesting to us. So I think it's just we always try to make a film that we would like to see ourselves and uh, that tackles the, the issues um, that we're interested in. So that was the case for that so one as actually well. Actually, <coughs> Hollywood kept us sending a script with evil twins. Obviously, we were kind of experts on that. So we were kind of <laughs> uh, very pleased when we got this script. <laughs> At least it had no twins. <laughs> Wait, is that true that you kept getting evil twin scripts? Yeah, they, yeah, like in Hollywood, they believe like there is an expert for everything, and we were the experts for <laughs> twins, which doesn't make much sense. But I still. like it actually. Can I ask, how did the two of you start working together, and when did you find a, a shared sensibility? Yeah, actually, I started out as the babysitter of Veronica's child. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that, that's and that's like these movies about disturbed children yeah. who are born. Yeah. No, like for real, people always think we're joking, but we never are. That's our thing. Like also, like we told producers, that's our greatest power, secret weapon. Yeah, we want to shoot on location. We want to shoot in the cold on the actual frozen lake. We want to have like everything shot in sequence, everything real. And they thought we were joking. You shot in sequence. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, we're never joking. <laughs> so I was the babysitter. <laughs> and, yeah, I was, like, 13 or something and, like, amazed that somebody would trust me with her child. And he was a great babysitter, very cheap babysitter, so to speak, <laughs> because he didn't want any money. He just wanted uh, us to kind of rent VHS cassettes at the nearest video store in Vienna because he desperately wanted to see kind of as many kind of films as possible. He kind of grew up in the countryside and I, I was based in Vienna. So there we had a greater variety of, of films, obviously. So yeah, and then he, I think he never babysitted, actually just watched movies. Yeah, I put him to, to bed like as early as possible and then watched like seven, seven films in a row. And Veronica would come home at some point, uh, maybe slightly drunk, I don't know, up to this point. <laughs> never. Because she, enjoyed the same stuff that I did actually. So we watched like a weird variety of movies from ranging from John Casavetes, uh, Bresson to Friday the 13th part eight. And that's Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah, that's Which one of the pretty best. good ones. Which yeah. finds us forever. <laughs> really? It's one of our favorites. Because actually, like, I wanted to write about this. It's so weird that the ship changes its geography all the time. So it's actually, um, it's actually a masterpiece, I think. I mean, I haven't revisited it in a long time, but uh, it did. might be a masterpiece. Um, yeah, so we found very out. Very underrated one is Jason yeah, Goes is. to Hell. Not to go, not to get. It's too great. Deep I rewatched that, that one. I rewatched like it too recently. Yes, it's, it's very good. You also have to get the director's cut on that one because you can yep. often get stuck yep. with the the actual. Anyway, um, so you can join the club. So we seem to like the same <laughs> movies. Fantastic. Um, and we realized that both of us did, which was like weird at the time, but out of that kind of a friendship grew, like feeling the same towards movies that are really important to us and that kind of also shape us as, as persons in a way and what, what uh, unites us in a way is that we like to be disturbed in cinema and we like to have an unpleasant time, so to say. Um, 
Yes, and then actually Severin went to film school and I kind of used to be a film journalist and a screenwriter. And yeah, there was one point uh, we wanted kind of, there was a documentary which we kind of, I don't know, fell in love with, subject we fell in love with. So kind of we said, okay, why not trying to do it together? So it was like actually not a plan at all, also not a plan to end up here doing films like in the States, it just like all happened. And did you find that upon doing that documentary and upon doing Good Night Mommy that the two of you, your collaboration was just kind of natural and made sense and there wasn't too much friction while, while doing it? <coughs> we always say we only share one brain, so it's hard to sit so far away because... <laughs> yeah, we're only half a director each, so yeah. And we realized that, <laughs> so we need to be two. But we share one salary, so that's fine with most producers. Um, when it comes to The Lodge, I, uh, I really love this film. I think it's in a, a, a great horror film, and there's so many coming out right now, but this uh, has, is very different than a lot of them that are coming out. Um, but I also am nervous about talking about this because I don't want to give anything away. There are moments in the first act of the movie that are so shocking and horrifying that I did not know was coming in any way whatsoever, uh, and I don't want to ruin that for anybody. So let's try to talk about it without doing that. Um, one of the things that we can say is that these are two grief-stricken children who are also at the same time not defined by their grief, but are kind of troublemakers in a way as well. What drew you to this to, to these parts? Who wants to take it? They are troublemakers. <laughs> um, for me, uh, I was drawn to the part because of Veronica and Severin. I was a little hesitant about doing another horror film because I had done one right before then. You turned and us down, see, like, <laughs> Wait, it, like it was. Which one the had truth. you done right before? Uh, yes, it. that's right, of course. Um, the, very, the most successful horror <laughs> film of the last like 10 years, <laughs> yes. Um, so then, basically, actually one of the producers on It, Barbara, she told me, why don't you watch Goodnight Mommy and then, then just think about it. I said, okay, I'll watch Goodnight Mommy. And I did, and then I realized, oh, this isn't, like you said, it, it's not another horror film. It's, it's more psychological, and it makes you think, and, um, you know, it was just so beautifully done. I was like, oh, boy, I have to work with these people, and I have to be a part of something um, that, they're, that they're creating. So, And I'd imagine I it's a completely different process, not just because it's a different kind of movie story-wise but a different process than it whereas it is this like fairly big budgeted uh fastidiously meticulously art directed movie and this is a kind of slow burn performance based inside of a house shot in sequence as well yeah for something like it i feel like it's a lot of fun happy moments and then then you're in the sewer and you're and there's all these jump scares and it's a lot of physicality to it whereas this is it's all emotion and just constantly being in a dark and tense place <laughs> but in a fun way they had to spend all time long in the attic so <laughs> so also figuratively a dark place uh, literally leo what about what uh, what about you what was it like for you shooting this i was really excited to work with the dog but then i got to set and they told me the dog was working so i couldn't play with it I'm still in therapy for that no, i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> I loved the characters, and I was so excited that the story is such an original idea. I've never, you know, read or seen anything like it before. And, I mean, I love the storyline. I love the characters and the way they're developed throughout the movie. And I love Veronica and Severin. The majority of the movie is, uh, I mean, Richard Armitage is in it as well, but the majority of the movie is the two of you and, and Riley Keough. What was it like uh, working with her? So we were kind of kept separate from her. Really? Um, they had us. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. the attic, we imprisoned them. <laughs> we school in the attic. No, we were doing people. lots of fun things with Veronica and Severn. They would take us ice skating, uh, rock climbing. We played tennis. Played tennis, pool. Um, and so she was kind of left alone and yeah. forced to be by herself while yeah. we were having a good time. Just to, just to <laughs> have that bond and that chemistry because we're siblings. Um, and so at first we didn't really get to know her, but then while working, obviously we we found out who she was and 
obviously liked her. She's a great person and super kind, but also very talented. Do you find it easier or or more difficult to do scenes like that with someone that you are outside of set, not developing any kind of bond with, so therefore when you get there, it's a little cold, or would you prefer a playful atmosphere where you know them and you can sort of play within that dynamic? Yeah, for a relationship like, like we had in the film where it's so distant and cold and we don't want to know who she is. I feel like that was the best case scenario where we're not comfortable with her at all and don't feel like, because with us, just, it's all about the, the looks between you and, and the way you deliver the dialogue. And if you know that person, you feel comfortable with them, it's not going to be the same. Franny, you were going to say something? No, actually, we, we try. We have, like, I think, a uh, specific way of working. So we never kind of rehearsed properly as you would do it for other films. Uh, so we never, I mean, they learned the lines, but we kind of, actually wanted to <laughs> um, avoid it, that they learn it, because we wanted them to improvise a little bit. Um, so for us is the trust between us and the actors and actresses, and the trust of them to each other was very important. And as they played uh, brother and sister, and they have never been together before, we kind of used the time we had to kind of, so that they could bond. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was very important to us. Is it difficult to, I mean, you, you, you've you done a documentary before, but horror is such a very specific tone, and you are trying to create an atmosphere of dread, and that is not just cinematography, it's not just post-production with music, it is also how people deliver specific lines. How do you engage with improvisation while while in that? How do you maintain the, the, the tone that you're looking for? Yeah, actually, that's, that's a very interesting question to ask, because, like, for Good Night Mommy, like, the... We talked, having never done a fiction film before, to like famous Austrian directors, and they all said, okay, this is not a good idea, like doing improvisation and horror, because horror needs to be constructed very neatly and very strict, and it's all like, uh, it has to fulfill a certain formula, and if improvisation comes in, it's going on for too long, yeah. it's uncontrollable, and actually that's all the stuff we were interested in. We feel most horror films, they... They're like zombies, they're not really alive. And we felt, okay, we need to have some real life and some spontaneity, spent, some spontaneity. spontaneity. thank you, <laughs> um, enter, the, enter the movie in a way. So whatever most directors are afraid of, like shoot with kids, shoot with animals, shoot in the snow, that were all things that we really loved because it's partly unpredictable in a way. Well, that's so interesting because I do feel like the best horror movies even going back to something like Jason Takes Manhattan, right, which is not necessarily the best horror movie, but is incredible for what it is, is a sense of uh, shock and spontaneity. It goes somewhere that is unexpected. And so many horror movies are being made right now under the guise of like, well, this is a thriller. It has to be constructed so clearly and make perfect sense. So having those moments that shock you out of your seat are why you get into horror in the first place when you're a kid. Yeah, I think people like or producers, they want to recreate the formula of success that they know worked once, but by doing that over and over and over again, of course, it's really expectable. Uh, like the next jump scare is just around the corner and the music tells you how to feel all the time. And we're not interested in that. So we try to think like or try to write the script looking through our characters' eyes. And whenever the characters would take like and a left turn, let's say, and the script wanted them to go right, we would go with the characters and say, okay, let's see where they are going. Let's see if that's maybe a more interesting route for the film to take. And I think this makes it uh, more unexpected because it just follows the characters and what they would do. And like the first version of the script actually ended a bit quicker mm. like and we like sooner and we ask ourselves okay but for us it would be more interesting what would happen after the ending after the ending of the movie how would it continue and actually that was like the first thing that really drew us to the material to ask ourselves okay we have those characters they end up in this situation but what's coming next uh, was the cult, um, I think we can talk vaguely about the cult that is with, within the film, was that always a part of the original script or was that something that, that, that you guys added, added later as you, as you came on board? No, it was always a part of the, of the original script. Um, I think we, like, we brought like, our own Austrian <laughs> Catholic upbringing uh, like, the to the cult. The inside cult we brought to it. 
Uh, I think we have time for a couple questions from the audience. Uh, who has a question? First question? Does someone have a question? Sure. Do you have a microphone? Yeah. Yes, I do. I was going to ask about why you decided to shoot in sequence, but I think the answer is so that the improv can be like more spontaneous for the actors, very in the moment, so that they can connect the, the dots for themselves. Would you say that that was why you decided to shoot in sequence? Good question. Good answer. <laughs> um, yeah, that's like a large part of the decision. The other, like, we knew with Riley that for her, like, the most difficult part would be to create, like, her character's journey. It goes into a rather dark place in a way. And if you don't shoot it in sequence, but maybe start with the last moment, you have to guess, like, how far into the dark will she be able to go? And I think just guessing, you never guess, like, far enough in a way. So we decided, okay, let's, let's, basically hold hands and, and keep going <laughs> into the darkness and see how far we get. And I think we got much further than we would have ever guessed in a way. So that was also part of it. And actually it was not that difficult as it sounds because it was only basically one location, the lodge, and like the surrounding, the snow, the, the frozen lake, we could use that. So, you know, when, when kind of the weather was good, we would go outside and it's like you mean the weather was good, meaning the weather was bad? Yes, I mean, as Austrians, we only like bad weather, so... <laughs> uh, one more? What was it like building in or editing in the suspense into the film? I could rephrase. I mean, so much of the suspense and horror is built off of performance, I think, as well. It's not necessarily a movie that relies on, as you said, jump scares or on, sure, there is music and there is a sort of sense of dread through the technical aspects, but I feel like you're building that suspense very much, very early on with, with the performances. Yeah, I think it is part partly the performances, but we always also like to think it's it's silence in a way. Yeah. So most films, they tell you how you should feel by strong sound design and music and stuff like that. And we felt taking all of this away or many, many layers of that away uh, throws the audience back to themselves in a way. So that they have to bring themselves onto that like empty space and they bring their own fears and their own expectations and they don't always know what to expect. And I think this makes um, makes the whole thing, or this, this makes it um, a dreadful is maybe the, 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 the wrong word, but unpleasant to watch because you're constantly bringing yourself to it. I'm, yeah, I'm really good at advertising the movie. It's very unpleasant <laughs> to watch. <laughs> Come and not see it. I mean, you're advertising it to a person like me who would hear a director say, say okay, great, yeah, I want to be, I want something unpleasant. Um, yes, but, so do but we. But we really think actually that one of the worst sins of cinema would be boredom. So we, we kind of, when we go to cinema, we really like tension in films and we we like to be kind of on a thrill ride so when we write i think it starts actually with the script we try to to do that and as we are two and we always write together we kind of try to surprise each other to come up with weird ideas how to raise the suspense or the tension so i think it starts there actually yeah it's like ah, veronica is never gonna expect that <laughs> other way around <laughs> And actually, we also like for each other first audience. So uh, if I have an idea and Severin doesn't like it or thinks it's shit, we drop it. So it's like, um, yeah, it's kind of faster than usual because usually as if you're alone as a screenwriter, you sit there, you write like for hours, days and months, and then you kind of finally hand it in to someone. And then he said, oh, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And you have to go back and kind of rework it. And so we are two and we discuss it and... I mean, it's a different process. I, I mean, sound like, uh, no, no, funny. like it's for us, it's not like constant pain in a way. <laughs> yeah, it's like because I constantly hear it's not good, it's not good, it's not good. We could also <laughs> save it for later, like the pain, but we decided to have it like painful throughout. throughout. <laughs> As is the movie. Yeah, the thank movie you. is yeah, representative like of that. Yeah, full circle. Just mirrors what we're experiencing. <laughs> um, guys, uh, I love the lodge. I think it's fantastic. I think it's another uh, soon-to-be classic horror movie by by the two of you, thank two you. of my favorite working so horror much. filmmakers. Uh, when can people see the lodge? How can they see it? Uh, it's being released in cinemas on the seventh. Like, 7th. which this is pretty soon. This Friday. 
Yes, and yeah. then uh, going wide like in the weeks afterwards. Amazing. Actually, in the States and in Austria, which we are very proud of, at the same time, it kind of is released in our home country. Amazing. So you can fly to Austria and see it there if you want. <laughs> Saturday, I'm going to do that. Yes. Yeah. But it's, unfortunately, it's in German there, so they kind of dubbed it. Uh, well, by Saturday, I will have learned German, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> be, we'll be good. Uh, congratulations again. Everybody give Veronica Severin, uh, Jaden, and Leah a huge, a huge round of applause. Thank you.